Hi, it's The Wire, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, <clears throat> bettingangle.us, a free site. It is July 22nd, 2024. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Jake Paul, the cruiserweight division. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me lead by saying this. To Mike Perry directly right consider yourself lucky that Conor McGregor revealed himself I thought Perry came in I thought Perry tried his best I thought Perry was courageous I thought Perry gave it an honest effort now the idea that Conor McGregor would then use this opportunity to fire Mike Perry tells me quite frankly that Conor McGregor is not worth working for right it should also tell other entrepreneurs out there that there's an opportunity in bare knuckle fighting since you now know that Conor McGregor is one of these guys who isn't great in the position right if I were an entrepreneur I'd be approaching bare knuckle fighters finding out about their contracts, telling them, hey, give us a call when your contract's done. Right? I just thought Conor McGregor's performance was one of the poorest performances I've seen by anyone related to boxing in quite some time. Let me segue to the fight. Enough of my personal agenda. You know, Mike Perry was in over his head. Right? Boxing's a craft. People mistake it for some tough guy competition. You can be tough and you can get your ass kicked in boxing. Right? Let's just be blunt. Perry comes in. He's standing too upright. Right? His head is easy to find. There's no head tuck. He's not, you know, hiding a head behind a shoulder. He doesn't have a lean where he's suckering you in, looking hittable then having you miss and countering you. No, this was a tough guy who was there to take the pain, right? That's what Perry talks about doing. He can take the pain. He's there to take the pain. He thinks that you're going to be in the pocket trading with him and that he'll be able to load up on shots and stuff like that. There's no vertical part to his game. In other words, Perry's standing upright, he can't really bend his knees. He can't crouch. He can't do what, in a great fight that I haven't talked about here, but let me give the guy some props right now. He can't do what Chris Billum Smith, who I thought was done, did magnificently against Richard Riatpour. Right? Perry's just not built to come in, bend at the waist, fight out of a crouch, force the other guy to go through layers, right, an elbow, a shoulder, to try to find your head, have, you know, counters already set up where the minute the guy starts to throw, you're throwing a counter shot. Perry was in over his head. Now, all of that said, this is the absolute best Jake Paul performance I have seen. Right? Jake Paul is getting better every fight. Let me just say, the secret to Jake Paul shouldn't be a secret anymore. But it certainly was when he started his career. The secret to Jake Paul is he has an A-level right hand. Right, folks? He does not need a second right hand to land to finish you if he lands that first right hand flush. He has an a level right hand it's tremendous now what he has done through these exhibition matches is he has added tools to his toolkit in this fight and it was excellent he showed a lot of movement right he's fighting mike perry he at times doesn't allow a pocket to form He's moving around the ring. You notice, too, 
that he has developed a very good jab. Right, folks, it's, it's very good. And he's working on making it a mobile jab. Right, understand, some skills in boxing are really hard to put together, timing-wise. Right, I'm not going to say Jake Paul is where Tyson Fury is with his jab. Right, Fury has a mobile jab. But let's just say Jake Paul has put in the work. So you're seeing the jab and you're seeing Jake Paul marry it to movement. Right, the big story in this fight, though, is Jake Paul's left hook. He hurts Perry a few times with it. Ends the fight with a big left hook. Right? Um, folks, Jake Paul already has an A-level right hand. If he is savvy about developing his left, and he has been, and if he's savvy about adding that jab and adding movement, let me say something that sounds completely ridiculous right now. Jake Paul right now is a world-class cruiserweight. Right now, let me say he's going to have problems jumping up and winning the division, right? Because this is Jay Opatia's division. With Opatia, you're talking about movement, speed, southpaw. He has a mobile jab, right? You're talking about one of the better boxers, one of the better champions in boxing, right? But what I want people to do is to think about Maris Breedis, who, by the way, wants to fight Jake Paul, right? Let's be clear on Maris Breedis. You cannot stay in the pocket against him. Let me also say that I personally feel that Maris Breedis would be competitive at heavyweight I don't understand why he isn't fooling around at Bridger weight, given that you have fighters like Lucas Rosansky. He wouldn't have to hop into Bridger weight and immediately fight Lawrence Acoli, right? That's a height dynamic. That's a problem, right? That's a great jab. That's a problem. But understand, right now at Bridger weight, if he were to go to Poland and fight Rosansky, that's a big fight. Rosansky is going to want to trade with you in the pocket. Well, let me just say, Maris Breedis would be an interesting opponent for Jake Paul because Jake Paul moves better than Breedis. Jake Paul also has the blueprint. That second Breedis Opatia fight, where Opatia, who's extremely twitchy, is fainting, fainting, fainting Breedis out of his shoes, is keeping a cushion keeps the pocket moving, Jake Paul would have the opportunity to look at that film to figure things out. Again, though, that film's a little bit different because Opatai is a southpaw, right? But understand, I would say that Jake Paul's right hand is a bigger punch than anything Opatai throws. Opatai is more speed combination, defense, Right? Jake Paul doesn't have Opatia's defense, but Jake Paul does have a bigger punch. Let me say, too, we saw Dimitri Bevel beat Gilberto Ramirez at 175. Well, Ramirez is now one of the guys running the game at Cruiserweight. The question for Jake Paul with this movement, folks, I'm telling you, the movement's impressive. You don't even have to look at the punches thrown. Just look at the movement that Jake Paul throws down against Mike Perry, right? If Jake Paul can bring that movement to Gilberto Ramirez, who's going to come, Ramirez is complicated. He's going to come looking for Jake Paul's body. But understand, Ramirez is a switch. This is rear in boxing. Ramirez has a great jab. He can beat you from outside. He uses the jab a lot against Joe Smith. Look at that fight. But Ramirez also is excellent deep in the pocket. 
Look at his last fight where he puts his head almost on the guy's chest. So you would have an underrated Ramirez against an underrated, that's who he is now, folks, Jake Paul. Right? And you would have Ramirez reading the lay of the land. I, I get the feeling that Ramirez is one of these guys who reads you and makes adjustments. Right? You would have Ramirez reading the lay of the land trying to figure out, should I fight this guy from the outside or should I fight this guy deep inside where I'm one of the best body punchers in boxing? Right, let's just say if Jake Paul decides to jump up and fight world-class fighters, he has a bunch of them who would really bring out interesting fights and interesting skills during the match, right? I believe Jake Paul right now is world-class. The only thing that has me concerned after watching this fight is Jake Paul's stamina, right, folks? He's fighting Mike Perry. Mike Perry's not up on his toes. Mike Perry's not forcing you to find him which is what would happen if you fought Jay Opatia, right? You'd say, okay, there's Jay. Oh, here's Jay. Here's Jay. You'd be turning. You'd be, you know, wasting a lot of energy trying to find a guy. Right here, you had Mike Perry right in front of you. And Jake Paul, to me, looked tired by, let's say, the midway point of the fourth round. Right? You cannot be, <laughs> you cannot get tired early against a Gilberto Ramirez. Didn't that Beevil fight go the distance? Right? You're talking about guys here with serious experience. Maris Breedis faced Joe Opatia twice, went the distance. Right? Understand, you're talking at Cruiser about experienced fighters who in world-class fights against tough, complicated opponents went the distance, right? Three-minute rounds, 12 rounds, these guys went the distance. You look at Jake Paul, I thought Jake Paul looked magnificent, right? I thought he looked magnificent. Understand, Jake Paul against Chris Billum Smith in the United Kingdom that's a sellout. That's a big money fight. The problem is, we've seen Chris Billum Smith go the distance against Lawrence Acoli, who's now head honcho at Bridgerway. We just saw Chris Billum Smith go the distance against Richard Reakpour, who was unbeaten coming into the fight. As was Acoli. Billum Smith beat both. In other words, you're talking about a cruiserweight champ who has fought major competition, right? Billum Smith is really a puncher masquerading as a boxer, right? He has power. I believe Jake Paul can outmaneuver Chris Billum Smith, at least for the early rounds. The problem is in championship boxing, you've got to be prepared to go 12 rounds. Billum Smith himself got roughed up in the ninth round by Richard Reakpour. He made some adjustments, was able to complete the fight, complete the win. Right? But understand, boxing is unforgiving. As Philippe Ergovic found out, right? He was winning every round, in my opinion, against Dubois. And then, of course, is bloodied as that fight stopped. Right? You know, boxing's not one of these sports where you can completely fade in the second half of a fight and somehow be awarded the decision, right? In boxing, if you're bleeding, if you're getting hit, you can get stopped. Now, the question with Jake Paul, who hasn't been stopped, his only loss is Tommy Fury, if I'm correct, right? If he is fighting a Chris Billum Smith, a Richard Reakpour, right, at Cruiser, does he have the stamina to go 12 rounds 
Does he have the stamina to go 36 rounds against guys with punches who themselves, we already know, have the stamina because, of course, Reactport just went 12 rounds with Chris Willem Smith. Right? So, understand, I feel that Jake Paul, for all the hijinks and, you know, fighter meetings and interviews, for all that, this guy has world-class skills in this division. He has an A-level straight right hand, right? I would say to Jake Paul, Bridger Wade is new. Right? Understand, the crowd, just look at the crowd for the Akoli rosansky fight. Right? Think of some of the other guys, Alan Babich, who's having a rough time of it. Right? Understand, Jake Paul against Alan Babich, there'd be a question on whether Jake Paul would get through the first four rounds. Right At this stage, I know there are a lot of people watching this video who have the question of whether Alan Babich would get through the first four rounds. Right, But just to understand, Jake Paul at this stage has a lot of blockbuster fights. I know he's done a great job making money, but he has a lot of blockbuster live gates and pay-per-view events if he can deliver on the promise by actually being world-class. He has the following. I'm just telling you, this fight, look at the movement, look at the left hand, not just the jabs, right? I'm telling you, he's worked on mobility with that jab, which gives him an edge over folks who aren't mobile with the jab. Right? I believe Jake Paul is more mobile with his jab than Lawrence Okoli is. And Okoli is the champion at Bridger. Right? Okoli, by the way, has been calling out Deontay Wilder. That's a fight that should have sports fans excited if it happens. Right? Well, let me just say, if in fact Jake Paul can privately, behind the scenes, and he clearly has been doing a lot of work in the gym, if he can develop the stamina where he and his corner are convinced he can go 12 rounds against a J.O. Pattaya, a Maris Breedis, a Richard Reactpour, a McAladian, right? If, if he's convinced he can do that, then we're in for a huge treat because, folks, the players are at Cruiser. Right? That's an entertaining division. Right? That's a division. You know, um, the guy who uh, McKaylee just beat. Forget the guy's name. He's a shorter guy uh, from Africa. Right, folks? Jake Paul can beat guys like that. Because of the foot speed. Because of the ring coverage on his left hook. That's, of course, if Jake Paul can go 12 rounds. Right, so give this Mike Perry fight a look. I understand Perry isn't a boxer. He's a bare knuckle guy. I get it, right? I understand most boxers would be in there with a little bit more sway, uh, up on their toes, a little bit better movement, um, harder to hit, right? Different mindset than bare knuckle. Right, you know, in boxing, that head's on a swivel, right? We understand all that. But Jake Paul looked magnificent, right? The left hook that practically closes the show here. Look at the coverage on it. Look how far away Jake Paul is when he throws that left hook. Uh, realize that the guy is able, well, what he's been working on is movement with his shots, right? I'm gonna save the Mike Tyson fight for premium subscribers, right? That's a fight you need to watch. Not just from an entertainment perspective, but from a boxing perspective, because I believe that fight is gonna have repercussions 
We'll talk about it when it happens. Just know Jake Paul right now, in my opinion, is world class. He still has to pick his opponents carefully. If he just wants a payday, let me just say Jake Paul against J.O. Pattaya, that's a sellout in Australia. Folks, that's a fight I believe would easily top 800,000 pay-per-view buys, right? I think that fight from a stylistic perspective would be interesting to watch, right? I'll say this. While I would expect Obataya to win that fight, he'd have to be mindful of Jake Paul's right hand. He'd have to be mindful, believe it or not, of Jake Paul's left hook. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.